I'm going to be talking about the t first two werewolf stories from The Bloody Chamber, an anthology of short fiction by Angela Carter, where um, stories vary greatly in length. The title story approaches a novelette status with about 40 pages, while the shortest stories are vignettes one to two pages long. Um, all stories are based on popular fairy tales, and Carter is believed to have been inspired by Charles Perrault, who wrote and collected fairy tales. Um, she translated some of his works before embarking on The Bloody Chamber. And right now, I'll focus on the two stories that are based on Little Red Riding Hood, a well-known fairy tale whose origins reach as early as the 14th century and as um, far as the Orient. The earliest known printing version was included in Charles Perrault's um, Tales and Stories of the Past with Morals, Tales of Mother Goose, um, in, you can see this well, 1697. And um, he, Perrault, introduced the Red Hood which in many interpretations has crucial symbolic significance. Although presently, uh, the most popular variant today is uh, the one by uh, Brothers Grimm. And both the werewolf and the company of wolves, which I'm going to talk about, derive from this fairy tale. So um, first of all, as Helen Simpson points out in the introduction to the book, Angela Carter's uh, books are not just retellings of fairy tale, fairy tales. They are uh, new stories. Um, the quote, the quote goes uh, in the in the introduction to to the book. Helen Simpson says, "The Bloody Chamber is often wrongly described as a group of traditional fairy tales given a subversive feminist twist. In fact, these are new stories, not retellings." And uh, Carter said herself that she was not trying to do versions or, as the American edition of the book said, um, adult fairy tales, which is also here on the slide, um, not adult fairy tales. Um, but she says that she was trying to extra extract the latent content from the traditional stories to use it as the beginnings of new stories. The Simpson calls the result of that and exotic new hybrid. This this whole conflict of whether they are new fairy tales, old fairy tales, retold, reworked, what's going on? That's a very postmodern question of why are we re revisiting the past? What are we doing with the past? What are we doing with the literary tradition, with uh, cultural tradition? What does it mean to us today? How we relate to it? Um, um, what Carter says about the adult fairy tales, you might think, reading the, the um, collection of stories, that um, you know, she, 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 um, she references the original fairy tales in a way that you as a reader, you identify them almost immediately. But then there comes a shock of um, slight like, accentuations or, I don't know, various things that... Um, you think didn't appear in the original story, and a lot of a lot of violence, a lot of uh, talk about sexuality, and it makes you think that those are some, uh, you know, some mutilated versions that are updated in that way to be more modern, i.e., more violent, more sexual. But really, um, the 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 versions that we know are usually much tamer than like the actual original fairy tales. And it's uh, widely known that, for example, Brothers Grimm, whose stories already are pretty grim, um, revised their stories in uh, later editions so that, for example, they had a happy ending or uh, some of the like darker themes were, were omitted. And then um, in this case, a Pearl's version Pearl's version had a had a happy ending. Sorry, this is 
the wrong slide, possibly. Well, here you have some original fairy tale material already very heavy on sex and violence. The parole version of the story of Little Red Riding Hood um, had a very unhappy ending where the wolf eats up grandma, eats up Little Red Riding Hood, and that's the end. That's it. There's no hunter. There's no uh, rescue. That's how it ends. And Brothers Grimm changed that and added the, the happy ending. Parole's intention was, um, of course, uh, moralistic, as in um, the lack of a happy ending was supposed to be a warning for, for women to not to accept the advances of men. So, uh, well, for obvious reasons, also not to go into forests on their own when there is an actual danger of, of, of a wolf attack. But there's, uh, there's many interpretations of that same thing with, um, with a more sexual overtone of um, the wolf being, here's the slide, <laughs> sorry, the wolf possibly being uh, a lover. You can see pearls all over your hood. Unhappy ending, moralistic purpose, and the dangers of male sexuality. That's the, like, that's the traditional take on the story, that the wolf could be a lover. And then, I'm not sure if you can read that. Um, the path through the forest is adulthood, sexuality, uh, red cape, menstrual cycle, i.e. like physical maturity. Um, the wolf could also be a seducer, a sexual predator. Uh, but so still, even with a happy ending, it's it's um, it's supposed to, um, it's supposed to devaluate um, any interest a woman may have in sexuality and point the, out the dangers of of uh, of male sexuality. Also, there's a curious interpretation that a red cape um, meant prostitution in 17th century France. So uh, so it's almost like a, a warning not to become a prostitute, the, 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 the fairy tale. The fairy tale warns you not to become a prostitute. Um, and recently, a Colombian charity uh, used this image, used an image of Little Red Riding Hood as uh, as a child prostitute in a campaign against child labor, um, if you Google that, I'm sure it comes up, and there's just an image of uh, Little Red Riding Hood and a and a, just a slogan saying something like "Don't make children work" or or something. But onto Carter's stories, the first story, the first wolf story, the werewolf, is. Very short, or um, as, uh, as again, Helen Simpson says in the introduction, brutal and short in its tone, chillingly laconic. Um, the setting and language are very cold. Uh, the setting is more or less, like the quote says, it is a northern country, they have cold weather, they have cold hearts. And in terms of language, um, the well, the coldness means that there's not much ornate description or commentary, things are just described as they go. And um, what's pointed out in the beginning is that supernatural evil, such as witches, w werewolves, you know, all that um, is, is to, to, in that reality, it's very, very real. As, uh, as Carter says, the devil is as real as you and I. It would be interesting to ask how real are you and I in this. Who is the you? Who is the I? Is the author really real? Is the reader really real? How you know what what relationship that establishes? But plainly, what she means is that um, these um, these threats are actually real. So the a girl uh, goes into the woods 